At first glance, this looks like a normal star with a regular planet orbiting around it. But what you may not realize is that this is actually a neutron star and this right here is a diamond planet. Today we're going to talk about this unusual system located approximately 4,000 light years away from us and we're going to discover what makes this so unusual and so awesome. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now before I explain to you what exactly is going on here, let me just show you um, what is happening in this particular system. I'm going to accelerate time a little bit and you may realize that this particular planet actually orbits its parent star relatively quick. As a matter of fact, it only takes it about 2 hours or 2 hours and 10 minutes to orbit once. On top of that, this particular planet is actually larger than the star. And this is where it gets really interesting. In this particular system, this right here is a pulsar, and this right here is a former star that is now a planet. This used to be a star that has lost its outer shell and became a planet. This is actually one of the few examples, if not the only example that we are um, aware of, where a star, after some time, was demoted to a planetary status. Let's find out how this happens using Universe Sandbox 2. And so, a long time ago, possibly several billion years ago, there were two stars. This was a binary system, possibly had planets flying around it as well, but we're going to ignore the planets for now because we don't really know anything about them. So, for the lack of better names, we're going to call this one Pulsar and this one Diamond. Now, it actually does have a name. Uh, this particular planet, uh, this particular star is known as PSR J1719-1438, and this is same designation with a little b at the end because it is going to be a planet. So, this was several billion years ago, but then with time, this particular star lived out its life and un has undergone a supernova. We're going to simulate this by basically enabling realistic mode and hopefully it will actually go supernova. And here you go. All right, this is not exactly what I expected, but basically it um, created a supernova and this very likely destroyed the rest of the solar system, but its companion star remained. So let's actually just wait for the supernova to disappear. It's going to take about 30,000 years for all of this to kind of dissipate and to get removed from here so I can show you what was left at the end. And what was left afterwards is this. We had a pulsar in the middle, and this was the remains of that large supernova uh, from this large star, uh, the main, uh, main star. And then we also had a smaller star, very similar to our sun, uh, that was still orbiting around it. Now, with time, this star also uh, lost its shell and had undergone a nova losing uh, its outer shell and becoming a white dwarf. So we're going to simulate this by going in here and changing the age of this star to, let's just say, 15 billion years. Although it didn't take that long, it was actually probably a lot less than that. And following the nova of the smaller star, basically once it's lost its shell and became a white dwarf, this is what we had. So there was um, a pulsar in the middle. And then, let's see if we can enable trails here. And then we had um, a white dwarf orbiting around it at a relatively close distance of about 600,000 kilometers. Now, uh, this only took it a few hours to orbit. And so basically here, if I accelerate time, you'll notice that it's basically orbiting the pulsar. And pulsar is kind of orbiting around it as well. So they're going to dance around each other. But this was still a few billion years ago. Uh, with time, after several hundred million years... Uh, because this pulsar is actually more massive than uh, the white dwarf, and because they're so close together, um, this uh, pulsar started to kind of eat up some of the materials from this white dwarf and started to absorb some of its mass. So it, this particular um, white dwarf started to kind of lose its mass and become less and less massive, smaller and smaller. Uh, until eventually it lost all of its outer shell completely and its mass was only uh, about two times or even less than two times mass of Jupiter. So it's basically lost a huge amount of mass because the pulsar has actually eaten all of it. And because what was on top here was mostly things like hydrogen and uh, oxygen, what was left underneath was nothing but carbon. And eventually what was left underneath was a very, very large, very thick and very dense carbon shell. 
And I'm going to simulate this by basically changing these values just to show you what all of this looks like. So, and here we go. So having played around with these numbers, I think I created uh, what seems to be a relatively realistic representation of this diamond planet. So we have um, a gas giant like planet, but it's not truly a gas giant because it's actually a very, very large diamond uh, that has a mass of about two times the mass of Jupiter, uh, but it is smaller than Jupiter. It's um, total diameter is about 60,000 kilometers. And its density is much, much higher as well. Its density is something like 23 uh, grams per, per centimeter cube, which is a lot higher than Jupiter. So if I were to compare this to Jupiter, if I were to place it right next to um, this planet, it would be a lot larger. This is actually Jupiter. It's a lot less massive, but it is a lot larger. And it's fiery hot because it's so close to this pulsar, but we're going to ignore that for now. So the temperature here is also relatively high. It's about 1900 degrees Celsius. So this diamond is probably very, very hot. Now, what's interesting about this diamond uh, planet is that it's actually a theoretical possibility. And we do know that uh, there is a way for us for different planets to actually become uh, diamond planets. Um, and here specifically, we're talking about planets that instead of having silicons and oxygen like our Earth does, they would actually have mostly carbon on the inside, uh, which is uh, slightly different, but not by much. And most of these carbon planets um, have a relatively interesting composition and they would probably have a very similar sort of structure to Earth, but they would just have different materials. So on the inside, you would have some sort of a metal iron or steel core. And because it's carbon, carbon and iron usually produces steel. Uh, above it, you would have, uh, instead of silicates, you would probably have silicate carbides or titanium carbides, basically carbon-based um, metal alloys. And uh, above that, you would have either graphite or very, very thick diamond. Here, this entire layer would be basically um, a mixture of liquid and solid diamond that would also cause um, sometimes this planet or this type of a planet to have um, volcanic eruptions of pure diamonds. Basically, there will be diamonds everywhere. So there will be mountains of diamonds, there would possibly even be rivers and oceans of diamonds or some sort of a carbon uh, state materials, like it could actually be even things like oil or methane or tar, but basically all of it would be carbon based. And it's also very possible, or at least theoretically possible, to have some sort of a, a weather cycle on these types of planets, but it would be obviously very different because there would be absolutely no water here. Any kind of a water droplet that would fall to this planet, even if it was uh, through an asteroid collision or whatever else, it would most likely just disappear and combine with carbon to become sort of a carbon monoxide or some sort of a material that would not be water-based because uh, any kind of water would be combined into carbonaceous substances, such as, for example, carbon monoxide. And we actually think that there's quite a lot of these planets somewhere closer to the galactic center because the galactic center in our galaxy very likely has a much higher concentration of carbon to oxygen. Uh, so there is very likely to, ha to be more, uh, more stars and more solar systems that have a lot of carbon in them and not as much silicates, not as much oxygen as on the outskirts where we are located. And also, as the time passes, it's very likely that uh, more and more of these planets will be created as opposed to silicate-based planets like our planet Earth. But what makes this particular planet interesting, and I should probably rename this from Diamond to its actual name, which is, of course, PSR J1719-1438b, is that this used to be a star. So, technically, it doesn't really fit the planetary designation because it was originally a star and then it was sort of demoted to a planet. But it is technically also a planet right now, because if you were to go to the system and if you were to look at it, it would look no different from any of the planets that we have in our solar system, except, of course, that this is essentially a very large diamond. Even though it's kind of difficult to represent that in this game, imagine this as a very shiny, bright, diamond-like object orbiting this beautiful pulsar. And the only reason we even discovered this planet is because pulsars are very, very predictable. They usually pulsate every few milliseconds, and this particular pulsar um, does this every 5.8 milliseconds. But every once in a while, and specifically here we're talking about every two hours, its pulsations change slightly, and because of that we've discovered that there must have been a planet here, or there must be a planet orbiting around this pulsar, and this is what's changing its pulsating uh, events that are usually very stable, but they do change every two hours and 10 minutes and 37 seconds.
Now, all in all, I personally think this is probably one of the coolest uh, solar systems out there, specifically because not only does this have a pole star in the middle, but it has what used to be a star that is now a diamond. I mean, how cool is that? But on top of that, um, this is actually one of the one of two confirmed pole stars um, that have planets orbiting around them. And the other one we talked about previously, it's called Leech, and the planets are called Poltergeist, Phobitor, and Dragor. Now, this particular planet and this particular star um, don't actually have really cool names yet, but hopefully we'll come up with something relatively soon, because it would be absolutely amazing to name these and to give them a really cool title. But anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and I hope I kind of gave you a good idea of what this particular system looks like, how it was created, and what's going on in here, and why it is so awesome. Now, because this is so far away, and specifically it's about 4,000 light years away from us, I don't think we'll be visiting this particular system anytime soon, but maybe one day we'll come and check it out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support, and if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out some of the other videos. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends, family, or possibly your parents. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later, and as always, bye-bye.